and welcome to Epworth in Action. I'm your host, Reverend Steve Taylor, the associate pastor here at Epworth United Methodist Church. We're so glad you joined us for today's edition of Epworth in Action. We are still in the COVID-19, uh, kind of the isolation, uh, self, safer at home, you know, trying to, to keep away from everybody. Some businesses are still closed. We're starting to see some businesses begin to open back up. So maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel. But, you know, that can take such a major toll on us physically as well as mentally, being all kind of shut up in our homes a little bit. And, and it can kind of get depressing sometimes for some of us. On today's program, we're going to be talking with Reverend Ashley Green Young. She's a pastor in the United Methodist Church, at Ellic United Methodist Church, but she's also a case manager for Red Rock Behavioral Services here in Chickasha. So we're going to be speaking with her today concerning uh, some of the things that we can do to kind of uh, break out of that shell a little bit and, and become more active and not feel like we're trapped inside. Also, we'll hear some encouraging words from uh, Reverend Scott Kennedy today as well. But on today's program, like I said, we're going to be talking with Reverend Ashley Green Young. I had a chance to sit down with her earlier. We had to do it through a Zoom meeting due to the social distancing things. So I uh, had a chance to speak with her a little bit. So uh, let's move on to that interview and let's talk to Ashley Green Young. Well, I'm here talking with Ashley Green Young and Ashley is no stranger to a lot of folks here in the Chickasha area. Ashley was the uh, associate pastor here at Epworth United Methodist Church for a long time. And uh, she now is the senior pastor, the pastor at Ellic United Methodist Church. But Ashley, thanks for joining us. And But that's not all you do, is it? No, it's not. In addition to <laughs> pastoring at Ellic United Methodist Church, my weekday job, I work at Red Rock Behavioral Health. I'm a care coordinator. I work with our systems of care, which is, which is our children's side of things. And uh, working with families who are um, dealing with things like depression and anxiety and um, basic life skills and all of that. I'm not a licensed professional counselor. I am a case manager as well as a wellness coach. And um, my undergraduate degree, my studies is in family relations and child development. So I've always had a heart for um, mental health and how that affects our physical health and our spiritual health and how we're interconnected. Um, all of those areas are when, when you're sick, it affects your mental capacity. And when you're depressed, it affects your physical. It also affects your uh, spiritual relationship with God and with each other. And um, so anyway, that's kind of my heart right now is really helping individuals and families. And a lot of people don't realize the interconnect between the physical and the mental states. Uh, they have a direct correlation between each other on that. Absolutely. You know, I believe uh, God has created us to be in relationship uh, with him primarily, but also importantly with other people. And during this time of the pandemic, one of the important impacts in everybody's life has been the social distancing um, that has isolated us. Um, and we miss that human connection. Even the Zoom, Zooming and internet and FaceTime and all of those um, our brain is kind of tricked that we're in the same room, but I think our body knows we're not in the same room and we miss that ability to shake hands and hug and just be in somebody else's presence. And it can cause loneliness, um, depression, anxiety, fear, and those are all normal feelings to have during this time. Okay, I think I think you've diagnosed me already here because <laughs> I, I go 90 miles an hour, you know, full speed ahead. And for the last four weeks, I too have been self-isolating and safer at home as we've mm -hmm. been asked to do. And, uh, and, and that goes against my very nature. And, uh, and it does take a mental toll on you because you're sitting there, you, you lack motivation sometimes. Is that, is that a common thing? What are some of the things we go through? Absolutely, that's very common and very normal. And give yourself grace on that because we are dealing with a lot more than we normally are. And so we're not gonna be able to operate at the high capacity we've been operating and maybe that's better, healthier for all of us anyway, to slow down and <laughs> take a pause and take stock of what's important that we've been doing and uh, what needs to go, <laughs> you know, from our busy lives. But, um, but it does take a toll. And so give yourself grace, give your loved ones grace that 
Um, there are times you just kind of sit and find yourself staring into space because you're just kind of in shock. Like, what in the world does this world come to? So. Uh I tell you, you, you just described me again to a T. I, I, there are times I sit here and I go, okay, what's next? There should be <laughs> something I should be doing next, but I don't remember what it should be. Um, but let's talk, let, let's talk about the situation a little bit. Uh, you mentioned the depression, sometimes the staring off into space. What are some of the other things that we as, as individuals who are isolated need to be particularly uh, a, pay attention to? I think um, pay attention to how you are feeling. I mean, oftentimes because we're so busy, we can skate over what's really, what we're really feeling and uh, just stay busy until it's time to go to sleep and wake up and stay busy and um, pay attention to what you're feeling, your emotions, um, take stock. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you anxious? Um, and all your feelings are real and valid and you have a right to feel them. Um, but sometimes what we're feeling doesn't always reflect reality. While our feelings are real, they don't always reflect reality. Um, and so, uh, but it's important to express yourself during this time. Part of the isolation is we can't sit with a friend and just a uh, gab over lunch and unload on what's all going on. And we miss that. Um, but so find a way to express yourself, find somebody you can talk to or, um, find an outlet like uh, arts or crafts or journaling or something, but there's something about the feelings you have inside, letting them out that brings healing. That I think there's something about the way God has created us that to speak something out loud frees up some of the heaviness of what you're feeling, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, studies say if somebody's suicidal, if you talk to them about it, and, and say, you know, are you thinking about suicide? Just them saying, being able to say, yes, I've thought about it, frees up some of that and lessens their re repetitive thoughts about it. <laughs> so right. there's power in speaking it out. So find a trusted friend or loved one, or if you don't feel like there's anybody you can talk to, write it down on a piece of paper or express it through art. But there's power in getting your thoughts and feelings outside of your brain into the world um, that frees you and heals you some through that. You know, one thing that, that I have done myself, and I find myself doing this a little bit more, uh, I, I've taken up more reading, uh, which is very much against my nature. <laughs> I, I am not a reader, but I've oh. read like five or six books in the last four weeks. And another thing that I think is changing your surroundings a little bit. One of the yeah. things that I have done, I walk outside. Yes. The weather's been fairly good in some in some days, and take yourself outside. That, that that brings in some freshness. It's 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 part of staying home. It does help. Uh, you know, again, we talked about the physical connected to the mental. It does help to exercise in some form, um, to get out and take a walk. Um, you know, I just had knee replacement surgery, so walking is part of my physical therapy, but it's not always comfortable. So sometimes. I just sit out in the front yard and just sit in the sunshine if I'm not up to walking a long ways and then do my exercise inside, do some yoga and some stretches and that sort of thing. But like you said, getting out in the sunshine helps immensely, whether you walk or just sit outside for a bit, change your, change your point of view um, can really help. Right. And, and I think also in going to the spiritual side of this, as, as we do, is both of us being pastors is, 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 is laid out there for God. I mean, he's got the biggest shoulders of everybody. Yeah. When I was saying, speak it out. I mean, you can pray to God about what's on your mind and what's on your heart and pray even out loud, saying the things out, out loud, if you can, or even in your heart, God hears what's in our hearts, whether we say things out loud or hold them in tight, but yes, speak it out to God. You know, one of the things that, that I think is probably, and this is where I want to go with this, is the more you hold it in, it seems like the worse it gets. Yes. And I think, you know, as a caseworker, you're, you're going to probably echo that same thing. What are, what are some things? You mentioned about some trusted friends, talking with them. But if you continue to hold on too tight, it could be really detrimental for your own mental health. Absolutely. And I got... Um... I'm sitting at my desk. Hold on. 
I got this cheap little uh, composition notebook. It has a banana on it and it's scratch and sniff. <laughs> you can get them at the dollar store for a dollar or less. It's just a notebook. And um, for something, for me, this cheap little notebook, I'm able to write in, I draw in. I, uh, If I spend a lot on a journal, I think it's like treasured and I'm, I, don't, I only want to write the deepest of thoughts in it. <laughs> but a cheap little composition notebook, for some reason, uh, seems freeing to me. I don't feel like I have the pressure to really write intense, deep thoughts, but I end up doing that often um, in my journaling. And so if the thought of journaling seems intimidating, start with a cheap little notebook. <laughs> Some reason for me that took off the pressure on the journaling. And, uh, and so I just doodle, I draw, um, I write my prayers. Sometimes I'll write out scriptures in there that I want to memorize. I'm, I'm not a good memorizer. So to me, <laughs> writing them helps them. Writing them on paper helps me write it on my heart, the scriptures. So um, a journaling, I think, is another good way, a method of prayer for me. Um, is, and it's very helpful. Well, and then we get to the point where it almost becomes where it's just such burdensome that you have to reach out to somebody. Yes. And yes. what are some outlets? What are some what are some uh, outlets that people can can get a hold of? Um, well, here in town, uh, you can always call Red Rock. We're always accepting clients, and we're funded by the state, so we have um, uh, grants that cover services and all of that. Um, you can. Um, there's all sorts of therapists around town. Very excellent. Um, I've been to a few different of the. Uh, private therapists in town and always been pleased and so um, look online Google therapy Chickasha Oklahoma and there'll be a lot of resources talk to your pastor um, and then also if you're really feeling um, desperate and alone and and the thoughts of suicide creep in there's a national suicide hotline um, it's 1-800-273-TALK I believe there's going to be a graphic on the yes, screen we'll put a graphic up so they can see it they will give you help as well as they'll help you connect with uh, local resources for mental health as well. Um, but it's important to reach out, to know you're not alone. Um, call a friend, a family member, a pastor, uh, a professional, or call the suicide hotline. Um, but you're not alone. You are loved and you are needed in this world and um, reach out for help. It's there for you. You know, we see all the commercials on TV it says we're all in this together. And that's true. I mean, without a doubt, we're all in this together. Absolutely. Um, I, I wanted to say a few more things about the, some physical ways we can take care of ourselves Please. during this time. I wanted to go back a little bit. We talked about getting outside and exercise. Sleep is important. It's so, for me, I have insomnia. I'll confess that right now. I'm not, I'm preaching as much to myself right now. As I can. <laughs> but it's so tempting during this time uh, uh, self-isolation, working from home to get your sleep pattern off, to stay up too late, to sleep in too late, um, and all of that, not, not having good sleep habits affects your mental health as well. Sleep is where your brain heals through the day, and there are chemicals released during sleep that help your brain heal, and so keep good sleep habits, um, eat nutritious meals and snacks, um, it's so tempting to get all the junk food. We joked at the beginning, I, I remember joking that, you know, it was day two of the quarantine. I'd eaten all my snack foods already. Um, <laughs> and we're good at going to the grocery store once a week for all of our groceries, but it seems like we run out of our junk food about day two or three. <laughs> um, so eat nutritious, that does help. Uh, set up a routine um, each day, um, a routine helps, you know, this time of day, I'm going to exercise this time of day. I'm going to read this time of day. I'm going to do some work, whatever your routine needs to be to work for you and your family, but having a routine and keeping nutritious food and keeping sleep as part of that routine can be important. Um, self care, like you said, read, uh, listen to music, uh, craft or do some art journaling. And then the spiritual disciplines are important as to, to uh, support as important to pray, to uh, meditate on God's word, to study the scriptures, to read some devotionals, uh, to listen to worship music online. Um, there's and and stay connected to a church family. Um, even though we're not meeting in the building, there are church families active in every community, um, staying connected. And so uh, find a way to stay connected. 
I think that's one of the biggest things too is staying connected. I'm making phone calls, constantly checking on friends and family and neighbors and, and congregation members as well. As, as well as you, you said it right off the bat, keeping your routine. Mm -hmm. For me, that is key because I have a specific morning routine mm -hmm. and I have tried not to deviate from that because that just throws my whole thing off. Yes, yes. And part of that goes back to the sleep. It's hard to keep your morning routine if you haven't gone to sleep at a decent hour the night before as well. Another thing you might consider, take a break from the news and from social media. <laughs> I know we're talking about staying connected, but even if it's just a day to not read the news and hear everything, it can give your soul a break from all the bad news. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Instead of negative, so. Yeah, I've been I've been one of those. I've, I've tried to keep the TV off every once in a while just to give my mind a break of, of the uh, negative news and all the stuff going on. Or if you have to do it, I, I like to just read the headlines first thing in the morning and then the rest of the day, try not to watch the news because it right. just so much. <laughs> yeah. Ashley, thank you so much for being with us. Is there any final comments you'd like to share? No, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you're not alone. You are loved by God and by your faith community and um, reach out. We're here for you. All right, Ashley. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Ashley, and again, thanks for those great reminders, those great tips that we can have that can help us uh, not feel so alone and not feel so trapped in this uh, safer at home situation. Again, like I say, we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe by uh, the next uh, several weeks, uh, things will start to open back up each week a little bit more. So keep, keep the faith and keep your hope up. Let's hear from Scott Kennedy with some words of encouragement today. I want to thank our colleague and friend uh, Steve for organizing these uh, moments that we have together. They've been really impactful and helpful for us as a, a community. I want to thank Ashley uh, for her presence and uh, her kind and wise words for us uh, during this time. I, I was thinking, uh, kind of continuing the theme uh, spiritually. I'm, I'm certainly no counselor. I approach things as a, a pastor. And I think about this time when we are separated from one another. Uh, we're going to feel feelings of of loneliness, of isolation, of, of worry, uh, being separated from, from one another. And uh, I think that one of the important things we can do, Scripture tells us, is to reach out. Uh, someone told me once there are really only two prayers. Uh, the first is, uh, Lord, help. Uh, when we look to Scripture, we see uh, all the way through the Psalms, uh, the cry, I cry out to you, O Lord, and Lord, hear my cry. Uh, we, we cry out to the Lord in our need when we feel these darker feelings of emotion and uh, separation that God, we can go to God in our, our loneliness and, and find uh, friendship and companion. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, we sing. Um, we can look in the, the Old Testament as well. There's a whole book, a whole book uh, dedicated to, uh, to our sorrow, the book of Lamentations. Um, we, uh, we, we feel these kinds of feelings. God understands that, and God wants to speak to us and, and help us to, to understand and, um, and, and, and to reach out to him during these times. Uh, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, he talked about uh, when we experience worry about what we are to do, what we are to eat, what we are to wear, uh, he said to consider the lilies of the fields and the birds of the air that God uh, provides for them and that we can trust in him to provide for us and to be there for us during these times. So one, reach out, uh, uh, Lord, help is that first prayer. The second type of prayer is, uh, Lord, thank you. Um, we are, when we go to a place of gratitude in our lives, it often helps us place uh, the darker feelings into a, a point of perspective. So we want to uh, remember and give thanks for what God has done and what we have in our lives. And, and in that gratitude uh, for, for God's care in our life, uh, we find a place to, to put it into perspective. Um, those, those moments give us that kind of, of strength. Um, we want to, to reach out uh, to, to one another. We want to, to seek companionship during these times, not necessarily physically, but uh, spiritually we can reach out with a phone call, 
Remember when Jesus faced those most difficult moments in his life, he um, reached out and took his friends. Whenever uh, he went to the uh, time of prayer before even going to the cross, he took three of his closest friends, his disciples, with him. Uh, so we need to reach out to one another uh, during these times, not just waiting for someone to reach out to us, but to, to reach out to, to others. Uh, you can also reach out to Steve or I. Uh, we'll be glad to be there uh, to, to, to be present to you, to help you out during these times. So uh, I encourage you to do that. We reach out to the body of Christ where we feel each other's sorrows. We uh, rejoice with one another. All those are uh, places where God has given us help. Um, but also, if, if, if you feel those deeper feelings of depression and uh, emotions that are, are really leading strongly, uh, God has given us healthcare providers who are able to, to be there for us. So uh, reach out to the help that you need, uh, whether it be friends, whether it be the body of Christ, whether it be us as pastoral staff, or to, to a professional counselor, someone who can uh, help you out during these times. Uh, you are not alone. Uh, you're loved by God, and you're loved by us. Let us uh, embrace all the ways that God has given us resources to make it through. We'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us for Epworth in Action. Uh, we air this program Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock on Channel 6 on Suddenlink Cable. So if you have Suddenlink Cable, we, we show it uh, for its first time on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. You can also catch it on Epworth YouTube live streaming channel as well as Facebook Live, 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Again, we're so glad you've joined us for this week's episode of Epworth in Action. Join us next week. We'll have a brand new program and some more on how we can continue to keep our faith in action. Thanks again for joining us for Epworth in Action.